Do you measure to the insides or the outsides? Just the doors, I think. Don't look at me. I like everything just the way it is. If you want to change my cupboards, you're on your own, especially on Sunday morning. Measure everything. Good morning. Outside, it's 34 and a half. By 24 and a very little bit. Maxine, I hope you are not spending time redesigning your kitchen when you should be choosing wedding colors. I assure you I am not. Maxine, I need you to look at these samples and make some selections. This is not how I like to spend Sunday morning watching my kitchen being taken apart. Mom, we are measuring for estimates, that's all. Choosing wedding colors. Shouldn't a pregnant lady be taking it easy? I'd be taking it easy if Maxine simply chose a color. Mother, please do this for me. You can help me remodel the kitchen if you want. I like blue. Good blue. Blue is a perfectly acceptable color. For your wedding gown, what about champagne white? I can't find my permission slip. It, it's stuck to the refrigerator. Maybe we should go with ivory. Sunday morning is when I sit in the kitchen with my once-a-week bowl of coffee and read the paper. Alone. Happy. Well, Peter, we've obviously done enough for one day. Blue is the color of the wedding. That's a good beginning. Ta-ta, everyone. We'll talk soon. Wonderful. I look forward to it. Yeah. You haven't signed it. Well, I, I don't know if you can go. The whole class is going. Going where? To the Natural History Museum. Why can't she go? Because I can't get off work to take her. I've been on field trips without you before. Well, not this time, okay? Hey, we can go later on today. This is because of that guy, right? You think I'm being overly protective? I will not minimize your concern about a stalker. And that guy gives me the creep. I could take her. On one condition. I can get extra credit for going as a peer mentor. Thanks. What's the condition? That you get the hell out of my kitchen for the next hour. What about the cupboard? Excellent. Harvey, when you received a phone call warning of a bomb... Objection. It has not been proven to be an active explosive device. Overruled. A bomb threat is just a threat until the bomb is found. What was your response? Well, we have a procedure for locking down the campus and evacuating. Like a fire drill. Except when word got out that there was a bomb and there was a free-for-all. There were injuries to both students and staff. Was a bomb found? Yes. And a gym locker. Objection. It has not been established that it was a bomb. Timing is everything, Miss Westland. Sustained. How was the object in question found? Bomb sniffing dog. So the dog thought it was a bomb. Objection. Principal Harvey is not a pet psychic. Jeez, can anybody take a joke? Show some respect. That's good advice. You've been charged with a felony count of being party to a bomb threat and attempted murder with an explosive device. Uh, I, I'm amazed and slightly horrified that you would find anything about this remotely humorous. Your Honor, my client is simply anxious to tell his side. He'll have his chance. Anything else, Mr. Petrie? The state rests, Your Honor. Then we'll hear from the defense... At 2 o'clock this afternoon. 2 o'clock this afternoon. Then the next guy who calls, he says, according to Jerry, you give great... Yeah. Am I interrupting a risque limerick? Uh, no, Robert was just... Uh... I was just telling him about obscene phone calls. That's right, phone calls. Obscene ones. Are you making these phone calls or receiving them? Kimberly has been receiving them on her old extension, which is now mine, which means now I get 20 obscene calls a day. Have you bothered to star 69 any of these calls? Sure. They're from truck stop pay phones along the interstate, mostly I-95. Who's Jerry? Well, from the sound of it, some kid who's been scribbling Kimberly's name on men's room walls with a list of her talents. Why is this boy so angry at Kimberly? And, uh, 
Is he a client? And if so, what's he doing on I-95 hanging around truck stops? Or maybe he's just an ex-boyfriend. Sean, can you use that computer of yours to see if there's a Jerry in Kimberly's files? Perhaps he's a recent placement? Maxine, Kimberly's files were divided among a dozen different social workers. Do you know how long that'll take? Then I suggest we go straight to the source. Kimberly? I don't want to talk to Kimberly. I fired Kimberly. Are you going to call her or shall I? Fine. Thank you, Sean. Lieutenant Daniels, what are your qualifications for the construction, diffusion, and detonation of explosive devices? The main qualification is I still got all my parts. Lieutenant Daniels? I have 15 years in the Hartford Bomb Squad. And how would you classify the apparatus found in the gym locker? I call it a reverse Trojan. Could you explain to the court what that is? The Trojan horse looked harmless on the outside, but it was full of danger on the inside. What the boy did was the reverse. The outside looked like a bomb, but inside it was no more dangerous than a bowl of oatmeal. Excuse me. Who are you, sir? Uh, me. Um, name's Anthony Cangiano. Do either of you claim this gentleman? Well, I'm, I'm just here to observe. This is juvenile court. There is no observing. Well, what about his right to a public trial? Juvenile court is different. This is a close proceeding. Hmm. Secret trials. That sounds un-American, huh? Uh, you're gonna have to go, Mr. Cangiano. I'll be damned. Uh, sorry, Lieutenant Daniels. Um... When you say that the device was, was no more harmful than a bowl of oatmeal, you mean that it was a fake or it didn't go off? I'm saying that it wasn't a bomb. Maybe it was supposed to look like one, but it wasn't. Then why did the bomb-sniffing dog find it? Kid had the right ingredients. So we pulled purifier, stirring rods, blasting caps, stuff you get at the local hardware store for 20 bucks. That's what the dog found. But he intended it to look like a bomb and smell like a bomb. Objection. Lieutenant Daniels is not privy to my client's private thoughts. Sustained. My life coach, Wayne, encouraged me to come in and speak with you in person, despite the ruse de guerre you put me through. The, what? A ruse de guerre. Yeah. No, the other thing. Oh, my life coach. Kimberly, does the name Jerry mean anything at all to you? Wayne has taught me so much about giving myself permission to live up to my potential. He made me see that you took advantage of my open and generous nature and manipulated me into resigning my position at DCF when I really didn't want to. Wayne says that as an intelligent, compassionate being with an aptitude for social service, I must make my skills available to others. For example, a boy named Jerry. Maxine, I know your hostility is merely a projection of your own inner conflict. Wayne warned me of the emotional minefield you would make me step through if I decided to come back. Come back? What do you mean, come back? She's blackmailing us. It's called reframing the experience. I'm just taking this opportunity to set my career, which you derailed, back on track. You're willing to risk the welfare of a child in order to renegotiate your deal? You know who Jerry is, correct? I do. And if Jerry's in trouble, it's a load of trouble. Some kids are like that. I don't see any other alternative. What about a headlock? I can't believe you are going to consider rehiring this woman. Kimberly! Out of common decency, you have to give us the name. This is a letter stating that you're hiring me back. Well, why don't you just get him to sign it in blood? You're not going to sign that, Maxine, are you? Maxine, you were the person who got me worried about this boy in the first place, and damn it, I'm going to do what I have to to help him. But you didn't even read it. For all you know, you just put her in charge of the department. The name, Kimberly. It's Jerry with a G, not a J, and he's a she. Jerry Sabina, 18 years old, and she's aged out of the system. She's not our problem anymore. See you tomorrow. She hoodwinked us. Us? Us? Me then. She is awful, Sean. What did you expect? I thought there was a child in danger, and she was Aged that? out of the system or not, this girl Jerry is still in trouble, and we must retrieve something good out of this. 
and find her, Sean. Find her. Ms. Dorothea Mitchell was brought in late last night after being found unconscious on the street. She's been found to suffer from several secondary opportunistic infections due to her compromised immune system. Compromised by what? Well, you already told me. You might as well tell your boss. Ms. Mitchell has breast cancer, quite advanced as she did not seek treatment. The cancer has metastasized to her lungs and liver. My lungs are filling up with blood. I'm going to die. I suggest an aggressive treatment plan, the Taxol protocol. I see. Excuse us, Ms. Mitchell. This is a publicly funded facility. Yeah. We can't afford to be wasteful. Wasteful? Taxol has shown amazing results. The Taxol protocol involves three treatments at $2,000 a pop, not including the lab work. Her life is worth The more... protocol will not save her life. It probably won't even prolong it. It's our job to try and buck the odds. It's my job to keep the hospital afloat. Don't give me that. The fact is we have limited resources. What we give to one patient, we literally take from another. That tax all should be saved for someone who might actually survive the treatment. So what exactly do you suggest we do for this woman? Knock her on the head with a hammer and drag her down to the morgue? Or can't we afford a hammer? We make her comfortable. We allow her dignity. Judge Gray. I need my quarter. Here, here's another one. I don't want your quarter, I want mine. You know that guy, Congiano, who came in the court? He's a fed. How do you know? I ran his name. He came into our courtroom. That's my house. That's your house? I've served judges before you. Chances are I'll serve judges after you. Yes, that's my house. FBI? INS. That doesn't make any sense. What does the INS want with Maddie Carruthers? I don't know. Do that thing. Come on, it's the principal. Thank you. Maddie, why did you build a bomb? It wasn't a bomb. We've heard testimony in this court that it had many of the ingredients of a bomb. It only looked like one. I just wanted to scare them. Scare whom and why? Well... I had a geometry test I wasn't ready for. My teacher said that if I failed that I'd have to repeat the ninth grade. My dad would have lost it if that happened. Mr. Cangiano, has something changed that suddenly gives INS agents special powers in juvenile court? Um, yes, Your Honor. I got the appellate court to reverse your refusal to allow me to observe this proceeding. Ms. Wesleyan, Mr. Petrie, are you aware of any immigration issues associated with this case? No, Your Honor. Not in the least, Judge Gray. Counsel in my chambers, Mr. Cangiano, Mr. Crothers. What is the INS's interest in this case, Mr. Cangiano? Um, with all due respect, Your Honor, it's better if I don't tell you. Why? Because it could affect your decision and the outcome of this trial. <laughs> well, thanks for your concern. You're welcome. And now I'd like to know the INS's interest in this case. If Maddie Carruthers is convicted of a felony, I'm here to take him into custody. The hell you are. Why? Is this because his mother was Afghani? Unfortunately, so is your son, sir. I'm an American. Maddie's American. Mr. Carruthers, where was Maddie born? Afghanistan. His mother and I met while I was stationed in the Mideast. And how did he come to the United States? Nula brought him on our passport and died while she was here. But no formal declaration of citizenship was filed? Maddie is my son. I'm an American citizen who served his country overseas. Doesn't that automatically make him an American citizen? The Supreme Court ruled that maternal citizenship passes automatically, but paternal citizenship must be declared. In the eyes of the law, his son is a citizen of Afghanistan here illegally. And if I convict him of a felony, then you take him into custody? For how long? Uh, indefinitely, Mr. Carruthers. Non-citizens do not share our constitutional right to a speedy process. you got to be kidding me. The boy's treatment at the hands of the INS is a collateral issue. Well, knowing what we now know, Mr. Petrie, are you interested in modifying your charges? No way I'm pleading him down. An Arab kid builds a bomb? He's an American. He plays football. He's a mediocre student who just wanted to get out of a test. Your Honor, the consequences of a felony conviction far outweigh any punitive action he may receive in your courtroom and therefore have to be taken into consideration. Again, what happens to Maddie Carruthers beyond this court is not what's at issue. 
The state is not going to back down on these charges, Your Honor. Okay. Well, I'll see everyone back in court um, Wednesday at 4. Set them down with the others and have a seat. Are you coming down with something? Huh. I should be so lucky. If I was sick, maybe she'd leave me alone. About the wedding? Oh, yes. And her insatiable need for affection. Oh. And you do know what I mean by affection, right? Oh, uh, yes. I... I don't mean a quick hug. I, s I understand. During pregnancy, hormones play funny games. Let me get you some soup. Are you learning trucker slang? Excuse me? I used to be into CB. When was that? In the 80s. Do you understand what that means? Great 69. Great trucking company. 69 is the truck ID number. It's how the companies keep track of their rigs. The rest of this is pretty obscene. Can they locate a truck with that? With GPS technology, they could pinpoint it within a 10-meter margin of error. Thank you, Peter. What do I do about Jillian? Your duty. <sighs> hey, how long have I been a slave? A little while. This is what they call slipping in and out of a coma. It's the Dilaudid. You shouldn't be experiencing any pain. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. Can you stop this wheezy sound when I breathe? It's interfering with my coma. <laughs> There's not much I can do about that. What the hell can you do for me, then? We'll move you upstairs soon. Oh, I'm not quite upstairs. We both know that. Oh, I know what I want. What? A snort of cognac. Really good stuff. I've never had it. My finances tend to run towards Ripple. Alcohol's out of the question. You're on a very strong pain medication. Oh. Oh, it's up a cognac. If I can put fire, my feet up, some music. I'll have Gerald on the stereo and a really good looking man uh, drink with me. Come on, sport, help me out here. Miss Mitchell, is there anyone I can call? Not a one. No one? No one. You're my closest friend in the world, and you won't bring me a farewell drink? He's not available to take the call, or he won't take the call. I see. Uh, yes, thank you. What's wrong? Do you remember the brutality complaint I lodged against the police on Tim Lawrence's behalf? Mm-hmm. Ramifications. I am persona non grata with the police. Maxine, I don't know why you're still wasting your time with Jerry. I told you, she's not our responsibility anymore. Thank God. She was an abrasive kid. I never could make a placement work for her. Ran away from everyone. Do you ever wonder what this girl is doing in truck stop men's rooms? I'm not responsible for Jerry being a prostitute. Sean, when Jerry is found in a body bag, I, for one, am glad that I am not going to be on the other end of the feeding frenzy when the press comes to find out who failed this girl. Yeah. The press will be looking for a scapegoat, won't they? I could help you with the police. My life coach says not to fear exploiting all personal and professional liaison. You have a liaison with the police? <laughs> what do you need? I need the state police to ask the trucking company for the exact location of a particular truck. Then I need that truck stopped and searched. No problem. You wouldn't be taking advantage of a um, 
sexual relationship here, would you? Because that's not exactly the image of DCF I want portrayed to the world. Hey, it's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back in the saddle. Remember that little favor I did for you last month? Allowing you to speak to one of my cases without a guardian present? I'm calling in my mark. Oh, blackmail is much better for our image than an exchange of sexual favors. Yeah. <laughs> no, I need a phone call. The good news is your stalker seems to have withdrawn. Do stalkers do that? Well, you're fairly well insulated. You work in a courthouse. I'm watching your house at night. Maybe the kid's smart enough to know he has to lay off. Maybe he's just playing the smart. No, I'm not saying it's time to relax. In fact, I'm suggesting you might be in for a long haul. You might want to explain that to your family. Jason Lobdell is obsessed with me, not my family. And I especially don't want to alarm my daughter any more than necessary. I understand. I mean, how do I explain somebody like Jason Lobdell to a nine-year-old? Besides, I tell her, she'll tell her father, and he'll have even more grounds to take her away from me. She, Lauren knows to be cautious of strangers. We have a family password. We have an alarm. She knows to be careful. Okay, my professional opinion, and I'm not taking into consideration custody concerns and the like, you need to tell her about this guy, specifically. Bruce thinks I should also inform my ex-husband. How did I get into this? I never said that. That's what you think. That it's his right as a father? I'm a father. If someone was threatening my daughter, I would want to know about it. And if I didn't, it would make me angry. Very angry. Maxine, what are you doing here? I received a page. Well, so did I. I paged both names on the case file. Which case? Jerry Sabino. She's in critical but stable condition. You found her? Off of this young lady's tip, yes, we did. I'm glad I could be of help, Detective. She was being held captive by a trucker. How is she? Fractured pelvis, multiple hematomas, lacerations, burns, drugged. What happened to her? A trucker picked her up and decided she'd make a good plaything. Kept her handcuffed or drugged in the back of the cab. For how long? A couple of weeks. Tortured and raped her. She left graffiti asking for help when he let her use the facilities. Would you like to see her? Uh, that's not necessary. Good night. If that young lady hadn't figured it out and given us a call, we might have ended up at the morgue instead of the hospital. That Kimberly's a keeper. You're welcome to her. I'd like to see Jerry now. Is she coherent? On and off. Jerry, I'm Maxine Gray. I'm with the Department of Children and Families. Where's Kimberly? Where's Kimberly? But Kimberly wanted very much to be here with you. But uh, something came up at DCF, and she had to stay. So she asked me to come and look after you. Is there anything you need? Perhaps, uh, ice chips. You look a little parched. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, 
out. Oh, sorry. Were you out all night? Yes. <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm making Lauren's lunch for her field trip. Oh, my God. Is that today? Oh, no. No, don't worry. I'll just... I will, uh... Get a couple hours of sleep, and I will still be fine for the field trip. I'm going to tell Lauren about the stalker tonight. Good. And I have to tell Michael. I think you do, yes. Oh, goody, Maxine, you're still here. I found this gorgeous satin fabric in sky blue. It goes perfectly with the ivory. Are you are you really going with blue? I may, I may have mentioned that I like the color blue in. Sky blue, like Robin, but not quite as bold. Blue washes me out. And the florist can make pale blue hydrangea centerpieces... If you don't like blue, Amy, we could always change to burgundy. No, actually, we can't. Well, everybody looks good in burgundy. <laughs> no, actually, they don't. Jillian, I don't see why we can't Maxine, change to burgundy. I've spent the last 24 hours combing this city for every sky blue china pattern, floral display, fabric swatch, and cake topper that I could find. I've arranged for the reception at the Athenaeum to have a special sky blue lighting design. The printer, mixed. Sky blue ink for the invitations. I even got the driver of the carriage that I hired to transport you and Jared to the church to allow me to dress his horses in handmade sky blue velvet saddle covers. Do you know how much it costs to make sky blue velvet saddle covers? No. And now you're just going to casually say, oh, we can go with burgundy instead. Just because Miss Melanin challenged here doesn't think it goes well with her skin tone. Sky blue and ivory are the colors you picked and you are sticking with it, lady. Like it or not. Julian, I think that sky blue and ivory are lovely colors. They sure as hell are. Excuse me. Thank you, Mom. Good morning, Judge Gray. Mr. Cangiano, since you are so conversant with the law, you must be aware that I cannot discuss a case without lawyers present. Well, I don't want to discuss the case. Cup of coffee, double cream, double sugar. How do you know how I take my coffee? Well, I'm an agent of the federal government. We keep tabs. What do you want, Mr. Cangiano? I want you to understand that I'm simply an agent of the INS. Okay. I do as I'm told. Policies made by giants and carried out by dwarves. Me, I'd rather be chasing down terrorists with forged visas or busting sweatshops than deporting some pimply-faced motherless kid to Afghanistan. Okay, you're a dwarf. We can't discuss the case. I know. It's just that if you convict Matty Crothers, I gotta do something that I really don't want to do. Uh-uh. Forbidden territory. Okay. Okay. Well, for the sake of my conscience, I had to try, right? Mr. Cangiano, let me ask you a, a question about a Swedish kid. What, from Sweden? Yeah, yeah, let, let's say this kid from Sweden is convicted of a felony. What happens to him? Uh, I slap a pair of cuffs on him before he's out the door. You hold him indefinitely or just until his citizenship issues are resolved? I wish that was the scenario. What happens is I escort him to the airport. <clears throat> and he's put on the first plane to Sweden. You deport a 13-year-old boy? Giants and dwarves, Judge Gray. That... Well, what happens to him in Sweden? It's up to them. Best guess. Well, all right, Sweden doesn't have the social structure that we have, so most likely the kid's put in the army. The army? The average military recruit in Switzerland is... Sweden. ...between 12 and 15 years. And the Swedes have been at war on and off for 50 years which is a pretty damn stiff sentence for a kid who just wanted to miss a geometry quiz. Well, thank you, Mr. Cangiano. I've enjoyed this conversation. And uh, next time, double sugar, no cream. Very short career path. Now, it's not top of the line. I'm afraid that was a little out of my price range. So 
for good stuff. You're going to make me drink alone? I'm sober, Miss Mitchell. I lived a long life. Made lots of mistakes. That was a wonderful one. Thank God. <laughs> Every time I do that, blood comes out one end and pee comes out the other. Is it good? Taste it, can you? It's called anosmia. It's the medication. You lose your sense of taste, smell. If I lose an axe, my hearing and my sight. How is it that I never get to taste the good stuff? Carnivorous dinosaur reenactment. <laughs> Love thirsty little heathens. <laughs> Come on, let's hurry. Yeah, I like it here. It's peaceful. Excuse me? It's peaceful for the dinosaurs. That's because the dinosaurs are dead, Eric. Hey, Maxine, I got one for you. Why did the dinosaur cross the road? <laughs> because the chicken wasn't invented yet. <laughs> You have been spending far too much time with nine-year-olds. Speaking of which... Lauren? 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 Oh my god, is that him? I didn't mean to scare you. The prosecution contends that Maddie Carruthers made a bomb with the intention of causing property damage, injury, and death. The defense suggests he made something that looked like a bomb simply to get out of a geometry test. He called in a bomb threat. Everybody agrees on that. Would a real bomber have done that? Probably not. He would have let the bomb speak for itself. Therefore, I am finding on the lesser included offense of misdemeanor public endangerment and find him guilty of threatening with a false explosive device. That means a one, right? Uh, I, I wouldn't be celebrating yet, Mr. Carruthers. Calling in a bomb threat, whether or not the bomb is real, is a serious offense, especially in the current climate. I'm ordering that you make restitution to the school and the students for the property damage and the injury sustained. And I'm sentencing you to 600 hours community service under the supervision of DCF for the period of 364 days. So did I win or lose? What about the INS? Well, Mr. Carruthers, any misdemeanor with a sentence less than a full year, and the INS cannot deport your son. So, he gets a walk? No. Matt, Matty Carruthers deserves punishment. What he did was deplorable. 
But that punishment shouldn't include exile and possible death, which is what deportation to Afghanistan amounts to. So your honor is admitting that collateral consequences influence the ruling? Yes. My honor is admitting to that. Mr. Carruthers, I suggest that while Mr. Petrie works up his appeal, you try to solidify your son's citizenship. Judge Gracecourt. Next case. Okay. Judge Gray, your mother says you need it at home as soon as possible. Where is she? Is she okay? She's fine. She, she had a bath. She's more upset about Eric than anything else. You stood up to him. I didn't do any good. Well, Lauren is here, isn't she? We're lucky Eric was there. You're my hero, Eric Black. Some hero I lost the fight. Which uh, gives the police just what they need to arrest this Lobdell person. I'm very proud of you. But he hurt Eric. I know. It was that man from work. Yeah. Yeah. He's from work, but um, not in a good way. He's a criminal? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me before? I should have. But... But... I was afraid, and I didn't want to make you afraid, too. I, I didn't want to scare you. Was he trying to kidnap me? We don't know what he was doing. He, he, he wants to be part of our life, but, but he can't. He's dangerous, and we don't want him anywhere near us, okay? But I've called the police, and we have the alarm. And I've taken every precaution, and I promise I won't let anything happen to you. We're lucky Eric was there. You are a very lucky girl. You have a lot of people who love you and would do anything to protect you. You have the right to remain silent. Should you choose not to, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Amy? What's going on? They're arresting Eric for assault? This is ludicrous. This is the boy that was attacked. It's okay. Ma, ma see, see if Cross is back. This boy prevented my daughter from being kidnapped. L look at his eye. He's the one that was assaulted. We have a witness that says this boy attacked Mr. Lovedell first. Well, th there's been a mistake. Jason Lovedell, he has been stalking me. Let Eric go, and I will take full responsibility. Ma'am, you get your hand off me, or I'll place you under arrest. You're interfering with a peace officer in the execution of his duties. She's a judge. Then she'll understand the ramifications. Fine. Take us both in. Amy. Be sensible. You're a judge. Work it through the system. It's okay. I will be all right. I am not leaving this boy's side, so you might as well handcuff us both right now. Look, he's in handcuffs. Let him go, officer. Why should I? Because I'm a detective in an elite unit, and you're not. If he doesn't present himself by 9 a.m., I'll be back. I'm going to arrest Liddell right now. The best defense is a good offense. I just hope he resists arrest. Stay with us tonight. I'll call Sean and let him know. Mitchell, how do you feel?
Here's to you. You can taste it, Miss Mitchell. It's the good stuff. You taste that on your tongue? Sure you do. It tastes just like you thought it would. There's a fire in it, like you said. A fire in the hearth of a home with a fence and a man who lives just to be with you. Tastes like the laughter of people who love you. Can you taste it? Did you hear something? Yeah. I don't know. Did you? Oh! Oh! 